DB Crazy Man here. In this video, we take a look back at Chip's funniest and craziest goose. Do we understand you correctly? Insane stunts, amazing facts, and a look back at the biggest guest stars from classic television that were a regular part of Chip's. You've been drunken. Uh. I mean, drinking. In the episode Moving Violation, Ponce jumps inside a moving bus to save an older couple that we are led to believe are the only occupants of the moving vehicle. Unfortunately, the brakes go out, and then the bus starts rolling backwards down a very steep hill. Of course, Ponch, luckily, is calm, cool, and collected, as you'd expect. The brakes are out! Hold on! But there seems to be a story within the story, because long shots show us that there's somebody else in that bus. And it's definitely not that older feller that's hanging on to his wife for dear life. Of course, my theory is it's a ghost that is responsible for cutting the brake line. Or maybe it's just an extra stuntman enjoying the ride. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. In case you were wondering, Ponch did save the day. Which if he didn't, I wouldn't watch the show. Also from that episode, this man gets his door knocked off by a speeding blue van. When he first pulls in, there aren't any vehicles next to him. Ponch and John are just across the street. When his car gets hit, you can see a dark colored car parked in front of him. His door heads towards that parked car, but the next shot we see there is no dark colored car, no door on the ground, and a truck is just now pulling in. Talk about a time jump. How long did it take for Ponch and John to get across the street, I wonder? Ponch? In the episode Career Day, Ponch runs into his old high school principal, played by classic TV star Richard Deacon, who we all know is Mel from The Dick Van Dyke Show. Francis Llewellyn Poncharello. I still remember the number of probations you had. Probation, huh? So Ponch ends up giving a speech at his old high school, which turns into a bit of a Twilight Zone time travel moment. Did Ponch somehow go back in time as the students in the crowd appear to be from the 1960s and not the late 70s? Now, for some reason, Ponch does freeze up during his speech, at least at first, which, while you may be tempted to contribute to fear of crowds, I believe that Ponch was haunted by his old high school friends, if only for a few moments. The campus lies in a direct path to another institution, commonly referred to as the Twilight Zone. So in the beginning of the episode, when Ponch writes Mr. Singleton, his old principal, a ticket, there are only three people present, Ponch, John, and Mr. Singleton. So who is the guy in the white shirt reflected in John's glasses? Another strange occurrence happens in the episode Baby Food. For some reason, the traffic in the background is turning around for no apparent reason. It's almost as if the road wasn't completed and was just being used to film a TV series. Strange, isn't it? In the episode Taking Its Toll, Ponch and John are watching their boss, played by Robert Pine, aka the father of the new movie Captain Kirk, Chris Pine, on television. Sergeant Joseph Gatrier. You know, those dudes are relentless. After they turn the TV off, John jumps up and grabs the TV that apparently was working without having been plugged in. I mean, they did have those tiny battery-powered black and white TVs back then, but not something this big. I had one myself in the early 80s. I can't remember whatever happened to that thing. My career's on the line. It's not that big a deal. In the episode, The Hustle, a dent comes up after the accident is over. Notice the back end of the car to your right. It doesn't look to have sustained any damage whatsoever. There's a big dent in it when the ladies go to look at it. On a fun trivia note, Broderick Crawford from the Highway Patrol TV series appears in this episode as himself. They don't make TV shows like that anymore. Yeah, that's right, they don't, do they? Hmm, I wonder what kind of goose I can find on the Highway Patrol TV series. Another actor from the Highway Patrol appeared on three episodes of Chips, Bill Boyette. He was a regular on Adam-12, the TV show as well. In the episode, Hitchhiking Hitch, Ponch and John's helmets seem to be all over the place during roll call. First we see both helmets, then Ponch's, which was next to his elbow, is now missing. Then as the two go outside, their helmets are waiting for them on their motorcycles. Yeah, 
Also on that episode, unless John has two mics, it seems there's an apparent goof here has his mic is in his hand and resting on his radio at the same time. As we start to get into the stunts, I want to be clear, I'm not trying to belittle the amazing efforts of the stuntmen that risked their lives so that we could be entertained. Instead of looking at these as goofs, I guess we should look at them as tiny clues into how these amazing stunts were performed. John and Ponch are thrown off their motorcycles fleeing an exploding truck. The way they did the stunt was tie a cable around the motorcycle to cause it to abruptly stop as if they were being thrown off. If you look carefully, you can just make out the cable. In the episode Rainy Day, you can catch the type of protective headgear the stuntman wears as he almost slips a truck. It looks like a giant space helmet. The episode The Volunteers features a car pileup involving zoo animals. Back then, of course, they couldn't use CGI, and using real animals in a car stunt would be illegal, so they had to use stuffed animals in the stunt, and then include a shot after the accident with a real animal to sell the shot. One stunt they love to do on chips is have vehicles run up behind another one and then flip, and this was done with the aid of a ramp usually, which could be seen from time to time. On the episode, Repo Man, actor Mills Watson plays the bad guy. You might remember him as Deputy Perkins from BJ and the Bear and Sheriff Lobo. Mills, of course, was mostly bald, but you can tell that his stuntman had a full head of hair. In the episode Bio Rhythms, there's a stunt that really had me thinking for the longest that the stuntman on the box got hit by the shockwave of the blast by accident. I mean, the scene really seems organic, but in my research I found there is a difference of opinion on whether or not this was actually stuntmen or dummies on the bikes. So I took a long look. At first it appears that it has to be real stuntmen, but then the guy on your left appears to be clearly a dummy, the way his arms stay up in the air after he comes to a stop. What do you think? Did they use a combination of stuntmen and dummies? Either way, it's an amazing scene. This would probably look like it came from a video game if it would have been done today. I mean, I get the safety factor in using CGI, but seeing so many computer-generated images these days makes me appreciate the real-life stunt work and effort that went into these old shows back in the day. Speaking of dummies, there's no doubt that a mannequin was used on the passenger side of the van in this particular shot. Looks like they probably used a, a mannequin on the driver's side as well. This is what it looked like when they inserted the actors into the scene. Notice in the episode High Octane, as John and Ponch are in hot pursuit, John is wearing short sleeves. Up until they switch to a stuntman, then his arms are actually wrapped for the motorcycle crash that follows. Here's where using CGI to digitally add the appearance of skin back to the stuntman's arms might actually come in handy. I just can't stand some of these newer movies that use complete digital models of, uh, instead of a stuntman. It looks really phony when they do that. In the episode Battle of the Bands, some punks rob a van and one of them gets stuck on as it rolls downhill. Notice there are no mattresses inside, but when it crashes we see mattresses used by the stunt driver coming out the front window. Back to the strange and the bizarre, in the episode High Octane, John rides his bike up to a truck to inspect it, and then falls back. But looking closely for a second, the truck actually appears to be driving backwards. Either time just went wonky, or they ran the film backwards just for a second because they didn't want to do another shot. This next goof comes from either the coolest episode of Chips ever, or the weirdest, as it featured ninja cops who don't use guns. It was actually an attempt at creating a spin-off called Force 7. A guest starred John Rice Davies from Sliders and Indiana Jones as the bad guy, and Fred Dreyer from the series Hunter. The actual stars of Chips were barely in this episode. Works for me. The biggest goof that I found was some of those missed kicks in the show.
think it's safe to say that that wasn't even close. You know, if they would have put me, Clawed, Kung Fu Ninja Cat on that show, it would have been a huge hit. I'll take you. I'll take you Now let's take a look at the coolest classic TV guest stars on Chips, sometimes before they were even famous. This is by no means a complete list. There was a couple of times when they held charity events in which dozens of celebrities did cameos. John and Ponch managed to pull over more celebrities than Roscoe's Speed Trap on the Dukes of Hazard. There was Jim Backus from Gilligan's Island. You've been drunken? Huh? I mean drinking? You're gonna have to take a urine test. Here? No way. And this is puffin' stuff, don't you have a... And you're gonna write me a hey, ticket? Okay, okay. I'm... Step out of the car. Writing it, do you know how to stop it? Not 100% sure, but I read that this was the orangutan from any which way but loose that starred Clint Eastwood. Oh, I also noticed a goof on this one. When Ponch asked the ape to hit the brake, they didn't do a very good job of hiding the fact that the orangutan's trainer was guiding his hand. F Troops Ken Barry and Larry Storch were both on episodes. Tina Louise from Gilligan's Island. You Milton Burrow? If I'm not, I'm having a lot of fun with his wife. Heather Locklear from TJ Hooker. I like airplanes. I always have, but... Dwight Schultz, who played the Vietnam vet who was in and out of VA hospitals and was also the A-Team's pilot, was on ships two years before the A-Team playing a Vietnam vet just out of a VA hospital who loves planes but in this episode is attacking people that fly planes. Talk about foreshadowing. The level of coincidence here is mind-boggling. Before he was fighting crime on Miami Vice, Edward James Almost was giving John a hard time about the ticket. The way I heard is by Miami. Did you know that Chris Pine was actually on chips before he was born? That's him in his mother's womb. Seen here is actress Gwen Guilford, the wife of Robert Pine, who was also playing his wife on this episode. Who can guess which actor of the chips regular cast was on Star Trek? That's right, it was Michael Dorn who played Officer Jebediah Turner and would go on to play Worf, the Klingon on Star Trek The Next Generation. In the sixth season of Chips, because of a contract dispute, he was replaced by Clarence Gilliard, who went on to star along with Chuck Norris on Walker, Texas Ranger. I hope you enjoyed this trip back to the 70s and early 80s on the TV Crazy Man channel. Share your memories of the Chips in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, check out my other channel, Freddy Cat Cartoons, if you like funny animation. I appreciate your subscription there as well. Be on the lookout for more classic TV memories on the TV Crazy Man channel. I hope you have an awesome day.